My name is Tyler Robertson. I'm a robotics engineer here at Taylor Guitars. I work with our buffing robots, our spraying robots, um, and any kind of automation projects we have on the go. I got into robotics uh, kind of by accident. Um, I was trying to become a computer programmer. Um, I figured computers were going to be a, a big thing. I, I took systems engineering in university because I wasn't doing really well in math in high school and I thought uh, once I graduated high school I would go into something that didn't have much math. Engineering seemed like there was less math than computer science and uh, and I was boy was I wrong there. Um, so <laughs> when I moved to my, my college town or university town in Canada, um, uh, Guelph, uh, it was one reason was okay I, I like the school the second reason was when I went to visit the campus I saw signs for punk rock shows all over town so it was, and it was it was between a few different towns where I could study at and and that was a bit of a clincher and within six months I met some people so I got into robotics straight out of university you know coming into Taylor uh, was interesting for me uh, because I I came in from a, a client supplier basis, so someone would tell me what they need automation wise and then we would have to uh, provide a solution for them. Whereas at Taylor, there's kind of a, an open book. We have a, we're trying to make the best guitar possible, uh, the most beautiful guitar possible that will last forever. And okay, well, how does automation fit into that and how does automation fit into the people at Taylor? So, from day one at Taylor, um, you'd walk through our factory and you'd think, w well, you, you know, with enough money and time, you could automate all of this. And that's what I thought when I first came here. And you start talking to people who've been at Taylor for five, 10, 20 years, and they start giving you insight into what they really do. And it would make, make it a whole lot different to automate it. And uh, and there's a lot more that goes into every stage of manufacturing at Taylor that, that people don't see. Um, and they don't see the absolute critical detail that someone's putting into the work they're doing. Um, and for me, that was, that was really eye-opening for, for automation. I came here thinking, you know, all right, absolutely everything. I've cut wood with robots. I've sanded wood with robots. I've blasted, sandblasted things or spraying with robots and um, and you really have to pick and choose uh, because there's things that are, are so um, detailed and require constant feedback and constant uh, judgment calls because you're working with not just wood but you're working with uh, exotic wood and expensive wood and wood that as much as you try and as much as we try and we, we put a lot of effort into controlling how the wood behaves, you could spend $5 million to automate what someone's learned in 20 years or $10 million or $20 million. Uh, you can do, go down that rabbit hole. So Taylor's been really smart in what they did automate and what they started with was uh, operations that were, were hard on people's health. Um, both you know with spraying the respiratory system or with hand buffing it's your your wrists and your back and um, and they, they took those operations something that took a lot of time could have some variability and was really necessary to control on a manufacturing basis but also gave us huge payback in terms of um, how can we help the people at Taylor and, and that's also led Taylor into the, the robotic assembly um, stage. So we started with uh, two robots uh, to assemble our new ES2 pickups. So uh, our, our new ES2 assembling robot is going to significantly reduce our rework and, and increase our throughput so our electronics uh, staff can spend more time um, um, checking the quality of our products. Well, we were trying to make the expression to pick up assembly and I was making them by hand and it was taking about an hour or so to make each one which we thought was pretty exciting because we were making piezo pickups by hand you know right here in our own shop and David Hostler was the 
the brains behind the bunch and was thinking, we could do this automatically, you know, we could do, put some automation in here and, and, uh, and Matt Gazetta being the automation geek that he is, started thinking of little assemblies that could do the folding and so that kind of got the ball rolling and, and we talked to a friend who had a, a robot and he recommended the Epson robot and their salesman came by and he let us borrow a robot for like four months, which is, that's pretty good bait, you know. <laughs> you get to keep this robot and play with it for months. It's not like, I gotta have it next week, you know. And so, yeah, at the end of four months, we were pretty hooked and we, we had to have a robot. And by then we'd made fixtures and, and done some assembly work with it and could see the potential was pretty, pretty sweet. That's where robotics comes in nicely because nothing's perfect. Uh, you know, people still discover new things about guitars. The car was invented a uh, hundred years ago and where there's still new car advancements every day. There's always going to be new advancements in, in guitar building. Hopefully having a, a robotic system to assemble it gives us some flexibility. There's, there's tooling on this machine that's specific to the ES2, um, but should we decide to change that pickup again to improve on it like we did from the ES to the ES2. Um, a robot's flexible. We can change its positions, we can attach new tooling to it, and it's not a complete uh, investment in new uh, manufacturing tooling. So it, flexible manufacturing, it's the, the reason the automotive industry did it, and, uh, and it applies to us because the, uh, Taylor kind of operates like a, a really big uh, old school guitar shop. <laughs> there's, uh, there's really modern technology in it, but then um, we're still designing guitars uh, as a luthier would design them. So uh, when we discover new technology, um, it's taking uh, what's, what's handmade by a luthier and deciding what's going to be the easiest way to make this. So if we're as flexible as possible with how we can automate it, um, then it makes our job easier because we're not uh, constantly redesigning every aspect of the machine and, and robots really help that side of thing so people look at, at robots like um, you know it's like a little person they, they kind of look like an arm but really it's just uh, some castings some servo motors and coders and it's a uh, manipulating something in space so it's really no different than a number of pulleys, you just know where the pulleys are going to end up at the end of the day. So um, it's, a, it's a tool like anything else and, uh, and it's all how you use it.